Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Digital Flash Fire. This is Dan. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about Lord of the Rings Online. We're going to talk about a leveling guide. We're going to take you from 1 to 50 today, and then we're going to do 50 to 75 in the next video. Um, this one's going to be a little bit denser. The other one's going to be a little more, um, probably a little more even keeled, but it's definitely going to be something to watch out for. Now, I'm not going to do an in-depth class guide of each class. I am going to talk about the four basic roles of Lotro, the classes that you'll want to play to fill them, the classes to avoid as a new player, and some other kind of qualifiers for the rest of this video. So first off, pretty much any class is a good choice for a new, a new person in the game, especially if you have experience in other MMOs. Um, the ones I would caution you to avoid right away are the Warden and the Bjorning. Um, they're just, I love the Warden, it's actually my favorite class, you're going to see it in, later on in this video a few times, but it really isn't, um, it just isn't forgiving, and Bjorning, I just don't feel is in that great of a place. Um, if you haven't played an MMO before, a Champion, Hunter, Minstrel, and to some extent Guardian would probably be your best choices. Um... There really isn't a, like I said, there really isn't a wrong choice. I mean, if you're brand new to, to role-playing games, Warden's going to be awful and Bjorning's going to be tough, but you're not going to have those available unless you pay for them anyway. So what we're looking for as far as the, the zones, what we're, what we're going to advise you to do, what we're going to advise you to avoid. So... The first thing is quest and mob density. We want lots of quests and we don't want crazy aggro storms of mobs that are going to eat you alive. Uh, so zones that have been designed with the more modern standard in mind is going to be what we are going to aim for. We're going to look for zones that are fun and interesting. If a zone is really down, really depressing, just not something to get excited about, well, then we're not really going to recommend it. It also has to get you through to the next zone we're going to recommend. And there are a couple of tough zone, tough, tough gaps, tough places to get through. But we are going to deal with that as best we can. And we're going to show you kind of some recommended strategies on how to do things. Um, as far as traits, we're going to talk about that a little in the actual video. But in general, redline, redline, redline. And as far as crafting, do pick a crafting profession. Pick one that will allow you to make your own legendary weapons generally, and then forget about it. Um, you're, you know, keep up with it as best as you can, but don't put yourself out doing it. All right, so that's kind of our intro. That's where we're gonna go into. Next, we're gonna talk about the zones you're gonna wanna play, how you're gonna wanna play them, and the fun you're gonna have in them. For the first zone, we're going to talk about the Shire. The Shire is far and away the best zone you're going to run into for leveling a new character. Even if you're leveling a dwarf or a man or an elf. It's the race of man. I'm not using man in any kind of a pejorative sense or anything. But any of those you're going to want to... Um, you're going to want to head to the Shire and you're going to want to, want to run the quests there because it is just a much, much better zone. Um, the Shire is and its one of the first zones. It's still one of the best zones and everything that's happened with it has made it better. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting, especially at night, you know, the, the Tolkien always believed that Middle-earth was actually part of our world. It was our world in an earlier stage. And this game recreates that by putting in constellations like, well, the Big Dipper. Um, and all of the, the major constellations are there. Um, some of them are hidden by trees because I'm crap. But that's the kind of detail you get in this game. You know, they're very faithful to Tolkien's vision of the world. But one thing to, I guess, remember one thing to keep in mind, 
the goal of this guide is to get you leveling as quickly as possible and to get make that happen you want to have your character in a place with good quest density and this zone has it just i mean staggering along and you have quest after quest after quest after quest after quest that i can do even at level eight i mean I can't, i've got my you know task tracker filled already so this zone is definitely going to meet the need of having enough quests even if some of them are weird hobbits are in a lot of ways the moogles of lord of the rings so like this nosy hobbit if i'm doing the mail carrier quest and i get too close to him he's going to spot me and i'm going to fail the quest and have to start over when you're carrying pies and yes there is a pie carrying quest that's you know well, welcome to welcome to hobbits so if I'm doing the pie carrying quest and that uh, a hungry hobbit sees me, well, guess what? <laughs> I fail the quest and I get to start over. Um, like I said, with crafting, it's not something you're going to want to do a lot of starting out. And wow, this character is brand new. Um, but it is something that you're going to want to keep an eye on because... One of the things I like, you get experience for crafting, and it's not an insignificant amount of experience. So as long as it doesn't take you too far out of your way, sure, go ahead, do your crafting. You know, keep up on your tiers, make sure you can at least farm materials for whatever you're going to go back and do later. Um, the other neat thing about the Shire is, well, it's some of the most written about, written about parts of the Lord of the Rings. When you're in the Shire, you're traveling. I mean, you're going to go, you know, you've got quests that'll take you through, you know, Michel, Mi, through Michel Delving. You've got quests that will take you, you know, into Hobbiton. You've got quests that'll take you up the hill to the party tree and eventually to Bag End. So you're going to get a lot of lore, which if you're playing Lord of the Rings, let's face it, it's not the primary reason you're playing the game, but going to Bag End, going to the party tree, going to, you know, all these places that they talk about, heck, going to the Green Dragon. It's something that you really want to keep an eye on. And as a zone, this is one of the best zones you're going to get in the game. It's not the best, but this is a great zone. It's a very modern zone, and I think it holds up well against you know, even zones from like World of Warcraft or Star Wars The Old Republic, which are designed with a much more modern theme in mind or with much more modern methods in mind. Well, look at the, you know, when, when you play this zone, you're going to have a lot of fun. You're also going to be building deeds and traits, which you're definitely going to want later. You also run into a lot of important characters. Gaffer Gamgee, Sam Gamgee's uh, old gaffer, I guess he's called. So the first zone you're going to go through, like I said, is Bree, or is, woo, we're terrible, is the Shire. Then the next zone we're going to go to is Bree. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You see here on the map, we've gone through the Shire. Now we're heading east into Bree land. And I'm going to show you the view um, as you get into Bree land and on, well, the music system's great. And if you ever see people playing music, it's usually worth uh, keeping an eye on them. You've got the Greenway Crossing, and then you've got the Gates of Bree. It's, they don't ever close them, which is nice, because that would, that would be really annoying if they did. Bree Land is, you're, you're kind of forced into it. There really aren't any options between the mid, you know, the teens and the low 20s. So everyone's going to go to Bree, and the epic story is going to send you to Bree, and you're going to want to do the epic story do keep up on it. You know, you want to do the quest in it as you get them up until really Angmar, in which case you're probably going to want to wait a little while. Um, the other big reason to go to Bree is, you know, lore-wise, well, you're going to see, you know, like the end of the Prancing Pony. I mean, these, these are storied locations. These are characters you're going to really want to, you know, see. It's part of the experience that presumably you're playing the game for. So, the other nice thing about Bree is there's a lot of quest chains. You can, you can easily over-level in Bree. I don't really recommend it, but you can. So going to the map of Bree itself, 
you're going to see, you're going to start, you're going to wander around the northern Bree fields, you're going to wander around the Brandy Hills, you're going to go to the Barrow Downs. Depending on how long you stay, you may actually end up in eastern Bree fields in the far Chetwood, but by and large, you're going to be spending most of your time south and west of Bree. And it's a very, very good zone. Um, the, there are very few places where you run into aggro storms, where you've got, you know, the Murloc villages where everything is trying to eat your face. So, and you also, it's one of the main areas, if role-playing is your thing, I know we're kind of in a hardcore leveling guide, but hey, if role-playing is your thing, Bree is where it all begins. Uh, there are a lot of concerts here. You saw the people at the, you know, you may have seen the people at the beginning playing music on the bridge. There's a lot to see in this area. There's a lot to do in this area. So, again, Bree is the easy, automatic choice when it comes to where to go once you're done in the Shire. Um, you are also going to be picking up a lot of traits, so do keep an eye on that. You know, traits are much more important early on. They they used to be the big end game thing, but now the stat bonuses are most useful at the beginning. Um, at level 20, you're going to pick up skirmishes. I really cannot recommend skirmishes enough. Whether it's picking up that odd level, whether it's grinding for a little bit better gear if you have some stuff that's fallen behind, skirmishes have a lot to offer you. Um, also, the this is kind of a living zone in a lot of ways. The Thornley's worksite did not used to have nearly as many buildings, but they decided to go ahead and add to it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went back and did even more at some point in the future, probably as um, the, the Fellowship, or not the Fellowship, as Frodo moves towards Mount Doom and as they resolve the epic story, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bree get even a little bit more developed. And it's a zone you return to throughout the game. It's, it's kind of the storm wind of Lord of the Rings Online. So next... Up, we are going to head even further east into the Lone Lands. We're going to talk about a couple of different issues that you're going to run into there. And we're going to talk about why we're doing the Lone Lands as opposed to other zones and some of the other decisions we make. The next zone we're going to look at is the Lone Lands. And as you can see on the map, it lies immediately to the east of Bree Land. Now, there's two towns in the Lone Lands. The first one you're going to see is going to be the Forsaken Inn immediately as you enter. The second one is Ostgaruth, much further to the east. There's a couple other small encampments you're going to go to, but these are going to be your two big quest hubs. And they are extremely, extremely dense quest hubs. You are going to get an absolute ton of experience in this zone. Um, it is also going to give you a lot of um, lore. You're actually going to be, this is going to be a zone you're going to return to several times. Now, as you can see from the video here, uh, this is a very desolate, kind of barren looking area. Um, it's very up and down, it's very hilly. Down in the distance you can actually see uh, the, lo the Forsaken Inn. Um, and on the other side you can make out Osgaruth if I can do it without falling. But the real reason you go here is because of Weathertop. Um, if you remember from the movies, if you remember from the book, this is where they go. This is where Frodo gets wounded, and this is where Gandalf leaves his little uh, note for them. Now, and this is just an absolutely stunning, stunning uh, bit of scenery. That's how healers DPS, by the way. Um, that will easily show you kind of the grandeur of this game, the, the way that this game is sort of meant to be looked at. And that's part of the reason why we picked this zone over the North Downs. In theory, the North Downs gives you more experience, but it takes forever. The quest density is much lower. You are more likely to run into the occasional aggro storm. You're more likely to suffer the sort of issues that we're trying to help you avoid with this uh, with this guide. So 
rather than send you up into the North Downs and have you take lo much longer to gain experience on a per hour basis, even if the total gain would be greater, we're going to suggest go to the Lone Lands, you know, follow the Epic Book, and you're going to go into the North Downs too. You're, you'll see the sights, but the sights aren't as impressive. You know, Trestle Bridge is nowhere near as impressive as um, Weathertop, and you're just not going to miss anything. You know, th there's nothing in the North Downs that's worth missing Weathertop. So that's kind of, and that's kind of the logic we're going to be following. It's going to be very much a experience per hour as well as fun. And there are some neat things in the North Downs. I mean, there's the little elven colony, there's the little dwarven colony, there's the bickering, and it's kind of entertaining, but by and large, the most fun you're going to have and the fastest you're going to level is definitely going to be in the Lone Lands. As you can see on the map, the next area we're going to look at is Even Dim. Even Dim is a wonderful, wonderful zone, and it's one that I think should actually be studied by level developers as an example of how to do things. This used to be one of the worst zones, if not in every MMO, than certainly in Lord of the Rings Online. And they've gone so far in fixing it that I think they've taken it to the best zone in any MMO. From 30 to 40, you're going to be in this zone and you're probably going to want to stay in it longer. It is so, so good. The quest density starting down in Oatbarton and Bullroar Sword is fantastic, taking you up to... Uh, Tinandir and Ostfarad, even out in um, Emin, Emin Yal, I believe. I'm taking out Emin Yuel, also known as the Eve Spires. We're going to call it the Eve Spires. Now, if you look, the scenery here also helps make the zone. Not only do you have a great level of uh, quests, you have this history of the northern kingdom of Arnor with the, the statue of the kings, with you know, the ruined cities and watchtowers. If you remember from the book, the outpost at Weathertop was just that. It was an outpost. It was a, a watchtower for this kingdom. And you can see a Numenos down below me, stretching out around the lake. And Tinandir, which is the, the ranger's camp in the ancient, uh, ancient kingdom of Arnor. Now, this is a beautiful zone. It is an amazing zone. And it's one that players are going to spend a lot of time in. The, and everything about it is much more modern than what you see in, say, oh... I mean, North Downs and even Lone Lands and even some later zones like uh, like Mirkwood. I mean, even Mirkwood is not as, as tight, is not as well organized and as fun as this zone. It's more beautiful. Mirkwood and the whole, you know, the whole Sad Elf area. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's what it is. It's the Sad Elves. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it doesn't play as well as Even Dim. And you're going to go to the zone, and you're going to love it, and you're going to thank me for telling you to go here rather than stumbling around the North Downs and the Trollshaws. Uh, the Trollshaws you're going to go to... Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, because there's this awkward area from the high 40s on. So going back to the map, Even Dim really peters out around level 40. And you're going to go to the Trollshaws some, and you're going to go to the Misty Mountains some. But as soon as you get to 42 or 43, and you're also going to run some skirmishes, because you really want to do, you do want to keep up on skirmishes. But as soon as you can, you're going to go to the next zone. So let's show you that. So the second lost zone we're going to go to is going to be Forishel. This is 
a stunningly beautiful zone and it's also a very well developed zone. Now, as you can see in the map, it is about as far north as you can get and still be in Middle Earth. However, it's not by any stretch of the imagination a, a desolate or empty zone. It's very between the quests, between the mobs, you're going to be very entertained by this zone. <coughs> it does home, it is home to one of the most difficult skirmishes, um, although I find it really fun on the characters that I choose to skirmish with. But what you're going to see as you travel through it, I mean, you have this wonderful icy land that You've got the northern lights, you've got this stunning skyscape, you've got this be these beautiful snowy mountains, these outposts of dwarves um, far, far to the north. And it's going to give you a very different flavor from all the other zones. You know, all the other zones you have this intense, very Tolkien-esque lore. And this gives you kind of a foretaste of what you're going to see much later on in Rohan and in Gondor, where rather than being the lore of elves and dwarves and of the old times, it's much more related to the race of man. And with the immersion you're going to get in Moria and even in Evendim, I think that this is a very good zone to break that up. It's also designed for leveling. The other zones in this range were endgame zones. It's places like, um, you know, Misty Mountains, which is definitely group oriented, especially in the higher levels, as well as, oh, what are, Angmar. Oh God, Angmar. You're not going to want to go to Angmar. Honestly, even with the... Even with the epic book quest, I would hold off on going to Angmar until after you've done uh, the Gates of Moria, until after you've got your legendary weapon, because it is going to make your life so much easier. You know, this zone is designed to be played by one person. There's very little group stuff. There is some, but even a lot of that is easily soloable. Um, and this, it, it catches the grandeur and it catches the beauty of Tolkien without putting you into that sometimes overly fanciful light that you get when when the devs kind of indulge their Tolkien-esque senses. In addition, there's a lot of good gear in this area. We haven't really talked about it very much, but this is definitely a point in the game where gear starts to get significantly more important. You know, before probably before Evendim, as long as you had a weapon that was within 10, 10 levels of your level, you were fine. Now you really want to start tightening it up, and this is definitely a good zone to get gear in. Now there is a little bit of a gap between Evendim at 40 and Forishel at theoretically 44, realistically 20, 42. So again, skirmishes, which will help you with that gear and help you with marks and medallions and all that good stuff as well as um, as well as picking up epic book quests and finishing those out will get you into the correct level range to enjoy this. Um, this is a rep grind as well. We, we haven't really talked about that much and you don't really want to spend a lot of time grinding rep in most cases. This is one of those cases where it will help you out to be paying attention to rep, to trying to do quests and encounters that will increase the rep you're getting. Now this is, as I said, this isn't the most lore intensive zone, but there are some things that happen here and that you'll encounter here, um, including a specific wrecked ship that are going to be, that are really neat little, uh, um, how to, little, uh, Easter eggs for people that are more involved in the Tolkien lore. Um, following this, you're going to go on into Eregion. 
For those of you who are really deeply involved in the lore, this zone is where Celebrimbor made the Rings of Power. It's where um, Sauron taught the elves how to make them. And is also the site of the War of the Rings. And you'll see the ruins and the kind of sparse fallen land. And it's not that it's ugly, and it's, it's certainly not, and it's not that it is completely wrecked, but it is a... It is a shadow of what it used to be, and they make that very clear. The ruins and the, um, the the overgrown nature of everything. You know, you can see the canals that have dried up. You can see the river that's, you know, just bypassing them now. And the ruins of the great library and of the elven uh, communities that used to make this kind of the a major center of elven uh, culture make this an absolutely beautiful zone. It's also an incredibly tight zone from a leveling perspective, and since that's what we're trying to do, well, let's talk about it. So you're gonna start in Gwingris, you're gonna do a bunch of quests there, and it's got a very natural progression. You start in Gwingris, you go to Akkad Aregion, you go to Akkad Dunan, um, and you will go to Mirabel. Or more likely, you'll already be 46 and you'll go to the Walls of Moria and you will be done with this portion of the video. Um, again, the, the lore, there's kind of a split to it. On one hand, you're going to be following, you know, as, as you follow the epic and as you follow the story quest, you're going to be following the, um, the, the elves, the craftsmen that crafted the Great Rings. And you're also going to be going into the passes to try to find exactly what happened to the Fellowship and ultimately tracking them into the Long Dark of Moria. So to sum up, we're going to go back one more time to the big map. You're going to start in the Shire. You're going to go to Breland. You're going to go to the Lone Lands. You're going to go to Evendin. This is all going to be very tight, very neat. You're going to trait for damage, okay? Generally, it's going to be red line for champions. It might be yellow for hunters. It's whatever the hell you want. Um, you're going to go to Forishel with some time spent in the Troll Shaws and the Misty Mountains. You're going to avoid North Downs and Angmar. Those zones are not productive. They're not going to help you level. Finally, you're going to go into Oregion. You're going to enjoy it because it is a really good zone. It's not quite as good as Evendim, but it is very good. And then once you hit 46, you're going to be ready for Moria and our next video. All right, folks, for Digital Flashfire, this is Dan. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a good day. I hope you've had a good time watching this video. Like, comment, let us know what you think. Have a good day.